Let's get this party started. Ah, uh. Toonie Tiger. Click if you don't know. The reason why streamers clap. Shut up! The reason why streamers clap at the beginning of their videos is so that they can like time the audio in the video. D a second one? Are you for real? But I don't really need to do that because I record it all as one video and not on separate timelines. So I don't I don't really have to do that. But welcome everybody to the Tiger episode number 90 something, I think. What did I get? Oh, I got this thing. That thing's kind of cool. I'm going to go wear that. Show everybody that I'm a cold collar like activist or supporter or something. I love cold collars. I love refrigerators. Probably also changed the shirt. It's definitely not Valentine's Day no more, dude. Maybe Toonie's just a helpless romantic look at this dude oh he's got that okay there we go we'll have tony the santa claus i guess gotta get the right hat for it too there we go happy tony merry tony guys trash 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 all right tony what do you got okay he's got some things we'll start with the fishing so i'm gonna be honest i'm right out the gate i'm gonna be honest i may have missed a little bit in the tony the tiger saga for only the second time ever and i apologize but for only the second time ever, I recorded a Toonie the Tiger episode and I went to edit and I went, man, I hate this episode. I did not like the things I was talking about. I didn't like my attitude. I didn't like my inflection. So I didn't, I scrapped it and I went, nope, this is not gonna see the light of day. And I know that some people are like, listen, it's a let's play. You gotta have the good, the bad and the <laughs> ugly. There's some ugly that it's not even entertaining, right? It's just, wow, this is boring and whiny and I didn't like it so I didn't air it and we learned from it and now here we are with a brand new Toonie the Tiger episode that I hope is miles better oh man look at the look at the gang here two crocs and a monkey new band name I'm calling it yeah your mustache tickles my nutsack baby and you know what that's okay as a content creator sometimes you come up with an idea and you write it out get it all ready and set up and then it's just not what you want it to be and that's okay so hopefully you guys understand that there's a missing Toonie the Tiger out there so somewhere that's never gonna be seen because I already deleted the footage, so you're not gonna see it regardless. Don't worry about it. This is still weird to me that the buttons are overlaid on top of this, but like everything else isn't because I'm trying to adjust the sound effect volume. It's just so awkward, dude. <laughs> Here, take the four jellyfish or whatever I caught. But we're back doing Toonie the Tiger. He's got these uh, stamp trainee stuff he's gotta do for the cellbot resistance. I don't know, it's been a while since I picked this up. Part of me really wants to do these more frequently so that I can give you better life updates because otherwise you skip like three months of my life and like I straight up have so much happen in three months I may not think I do but I straight up do and like two and a half months of it is lost because it's already out of my mind so now you get to hear stories about the more irrelevant things going on like for instance how I had a dream last night that I was on my computer and I accidentally downloaded a virus my girlfriend was next to me like freaking out being all like oh my goodness your computer what's wrong and I was like eh, it's okay because this is my dream computer it's the one that's in my dream it's not my real computer so there's nothing actually wrong with that and i guess we completed a task so we're gonna grab another one and she was like is that okay and i was like yeah that's fine now let's go catch the train so we can go see our show i don't know i'm like super hyper aware in my own dreams not enough where like i can manipulate the dream but when i'm asleep i know i'm dreaming so whenever something scary happens and i don't like it i'll just wake up because i'm like that dream sucked and i'll just wake myself up so i can go back to sleep and have a new dream i can't manipulate the dream itself i can manipulate Manipulate my thought process on how I approach the dream. And it's a cog building. I hate this game. So don't get why they don't get it. Just, just to make it work, buildings you need for tasks can't be cog buildings. It's not so hard. They're this close to like fixing all the problems with the game. And this is just one of the ones they haven't done yet. Just one of the ones. This close. And it's still a building. God, I hate it here. All right, baby. Third time's the charm. Hey, there it is. Let's go. So I'll be honest. You didn't really miss much with the last episode. I think I spent 45 minutes running around fighting bottom feeders to complete the task that I was already working working on. Now we get to do fun things like fight cogs and legal eagles and Samantha Spade, which is actually a cool building. I really like what they did with this. Like you go in and it becomes black and white, kind of like what Corporate Clash did with their whole neighborhood until people complained about it. See, when you do it for a whole neighborhood, people don't like it. You do it for one building and it's a vibe, right? Look at this. Or I'll wait my turn. That's fine. You know, oh, I got to do this one. Oh, I hate this. I gotta go find the things that are all over the place, you know? I actually made a video about this because people couldn't find it. And one of them was like really confusing because it was like next to a fishing spot, but it was like up on the box next to it. So people would go to the fishing spot thinking that it was right and then not seeing it right away and then giving up. So I'll do this and then I'll talk while I'm doing this. But there's a lot coming up. As I've stated, we finally have a release 
state for the 1.3 update for corporate clash and we have a basis for everything that's basically going to be in it as far as i know they're not hiding anything additional so it's not a whole cod revamp it's not a new playground it's not the board bot hq it seems to be 16 new managers which is like a bunch of mini bosses and then a bunch of like collectible tasks to help you level up your playground experience or something like that and being able to do each one for each playground gives you eight more laugh boosts so it takes it from 137 to 145 total and then i think there's supposed to be five more somewhere and i can't remember where they're at somebody will correct me somebody knows and now i just gotta do cash bots cash bot sell bot law bot eh, it's all the same but something i was wanting to do for the update which i was planning for so long and if you saw my last video you probably saw me shout it out right at the end of the video is that i wanted to do like a subathon for this update so i could be like hey guys to incentivize me to sit here and continuously play this update and do everything the update has to offer and spend time with you guys and make a club and fight all the managers and just give you all the toontown content you've always wanted and loved and desired i would do a subathon so every time somebody subs you know you add time to the timer i did two of them last year and then i haven't done one in over a year now and so this is my first one in like over a year and with that being said i'm kind of changing the parameters a little bit for the first one i think we went for like five days and the second one i capped at a week and we went the whole week it was kind of nuts this one i want to be a little bit more lenient on i'm giving myself six days instead of seven days and i'm also making the time more generous before it was five minutes per sub and now it's going to be six minutes per sub so that if somebody gifts like 10 subs it's an even hour and it just it's easier to kind of mentally figure out how long it is and i know that extra minute doesn't sound like a whole lot but you gotta remember last time we did go a full seven days so if you really think of the difference here five minutes to six minutes that ratio that, that ratio means that if we pay for five days worth you're getting that whole extra sixth day for free so if you really think about it it's kind of a steal so we already have a whole giant list of things that we're going to be doing for that and i'm really excited about it let me see if i can just bring up the list and shout out some of these because some of them are things that people are going to be like yeah that's so cool pretty standard stuff like we'll do a blindfolded cog boss or we'll do like a 10 gag factory challenge on corporate clash you know there's little incentives like that and then as it goes on we'll have other incentives like michael and i mr schmirky bumper pop we'll end up doing like karaoke together which you know sounds like a lot of fun we're gonna do the another infamous pie to the face which i've already purchased the pie for on my trip to the grocery store today i went out and i had to get some like microwave burritos and microwave soup so that i can have food to eat during the subathon because i usually cook food for myself right i do okay what to cook into the food i got some pictures on instagram and stuff but i gotta get food that i can just like put in the microwave and then eat so that i'm not spending too much time away from my computer so that i can spend more time playing toontown god i love toontown except for when the building i need is taken over by the cogs why can't they fix that so karaoke with smirky pie to the face we'll have an incentive for doing a mario kart night where we do mario kart with viewers and stuff there's one of them at a thousand subs that i think would be interesting my roommate poutine i told him he could cut my hair he has a whole hair cutting kit because he cuts his own hair don't know if that's obvious or not but i told him hey have free reign at my hair this was back when it was way longer when i first came up with the incentive but you know what i promised him he could do it so i'm gonna let him do it if that means he shaves me bald if that means he gives me a mohawk if that means whatever it means if he just goes done that's what he does and then the incentive after that is to dye my hair or at least whatever's left the color that the chat chooses and we have like five colors to choose from so we have a lot going on and i'm actually pretty excited for this one like i used to get a little bit of anxiety and a little bit of nerves but i feel really confident about this one i think it's gonna be a ton of fun and even though i have little incentives for other games like at a certain point if we hit it i'll play this paw patrol game for a few hours because why not it would be kind of funny and torturous but funny but a lot of it is going to be working on that new corporate clash update so if you want to see me in action or if you just want to be part of the event and show up and hang out and play some toontown you're always welcome to do that that's my little spiel for my subathon happening this friday this friday this friday so by all means come on out and i am taking most of this week to like not stream so that when i am streaming i have more of a voice and energy to do so whenever i do these long streams or long events i always lose my voice every single time and i don't want to like be streaming a lot before beforehand and then lose my voice beforehand that would just be bad that would be that would be a bad idea so instead i spent most of the day like moving stuff around my house one of my roommates luis he was like living in my kitchen for a while god bless his heart until you could find a more permanent place to be and he 
did eventually, and that more permanent place that he lives now is Wisconsin. Why he decided to move to Wisconsin right before the cold season, I don't know, but you know what? He found a room and it wasn't too expensive and the internet works. <laughs> but that's where he lives now and I'm very proud of him for taking that step in his life. Moved out of his parents' house, lived in my kitchen for eight or nine months, and then moved to Wisconsin where he's got his own room and he's got his job and he's feeling good about himself. But with that being said, we kind of rearranged the downstairs to kind of have a living room again because we have Thanksgiving coming up and we have people coming over for Thanksgiving. So we need space to kind of have Thanksgiving. So I actually have some pictures of what everything looks like now. I didn't take pictures of before because, well, I just didn't. I didn't think about it. I took pictures after to like share to show people who knew what it looked like, how it's different. But I didn't really think that I was going to share with you guys until like this exact moment right here. So that's on me for not thinking ahead, but that's okay. But this is the living room now. As you can see, we've got some stuff up there. We got the couch back. This is like the front area. This is stuff we're throwing away. This desk was Luis's desk. Now nobody sits there, but it's still there. This is where the TV is. You can actually see it on another angle here. Got the TV set up and the couch again. And so it's nice to have a little living room and you can see over here in the corner, you can see Michael's setup, which we've got over here. Now Michael's got this full setup going with a green screen and maybe he's sleeping back behind it as well. But we were able to condense everything and there's actually a lot more room than it looks like. So that's literally what I've spent all day doing. And now my back hurts and it's really dark outside even though it's only seven o'clock at night. It's been dark for like four four hours. It's so depressing, dude. It's so cold too. What's up with that? All right, Tony, let's go turn it in. You're making good progress. Good progress. Good progress. And I still have like other stuff I need to do today. I had this like list on my wall. This one says Michael move and that one says Tony Tiger. And you know what? I'm doing both of those right now. Still need to feed myself. Feeding myself would be good. I am starving right now. Quick, everybody vote where I should eat. Should I eat at Cane's, Chipotle, or Taco Bell? Joke's on you. None of you can actually vote and I've already eaten by the time you're seeing this. At least I hope I have. Can you imagine I just starve myself for several days while I edit this, upload it, put up a poll, wait for you all to vote on it. And I'm like, guys, please. I'm so hungry. Just say Chipotle and get it over with. Hey, not a cog building. Let's go. It only took one swap this time. One swap this time. <laughs> instead of hop do you get it do you guys get it sounds like that one song where it's like one hop this time do you get it guys do you get it? but again one of the reasons why we're cleaning up that whole area downstairs is because we're having thanksgiving in like a week and by thanksgiving i mean i'm probably still going to be streaming on thanksgiving because of the subathon and by maybe i mean probably i mean hey if you guys happen to get that many subs where the timer keeps going for that long i'll be streaming during thanksgiving but i have some friends coming in so i'm really excited about that and we're going to be doing like a friends giving over the weekend i'm pretty sure i've I've described to you guys before like how we do our thanksgivings around here we'll invite a bunch of friends over and instead of doing like traditional thanksgiving food like we'll do some like mashed potatoes and pumpkin pie stuff like that but otherwise we just do our favorite foods and i think that's a beautiful way to do it whether that be cheesecake or deviled eggs i'm making my deviled eggs again i think last year we had pizza and dino nuggies so <laughs> it's a great way to do it honestly so we've got at least a couple friends coming over and we're gonna make a whole event out of it and I'm really looking forward to that. I think we want to go out all day Saturday and then have a big meal on Sunday, but it's like trying to not cut it too close because I know one of my friends has to leave on Sunday. It's like Sunday night, trying to make everything work. But one of the reasons that we celebrate Thanksgiving this way is because I truly believe down in my heart of hearts that Thanksgiving is a sham. I mean, really think about it. The origins of Thanksgiving are very, oh, the, it's, it's not good, guys. It's not good. The whole Christopher Columbus came by and shared good food with the, Native Americans who are already living here. And it's like, yeah, it's a nice thought for a story. Then you realize that he murdered a lot of them and stole their land. And it's like, maybe we shouldn't be celebrating that. So instead we celebrate the modern take. We give thanks for the things that we are appreciative of in our life. And then we just stuff our face with food and watch football and parades. And I think that is way more worth celebrating than some sort of pompous white guy hundreds of years ago that goes, is this this India? And they're like, no, this isn't India. He goes, that's all right. It's mine now anyway. Thanksgiving's always kind of had a sketchy past. And you know, I don't blame people for skipping over it to get to Christmas early. Like Halloween ends and they're like, Christmas 
time, baby. I know capitalism says that. Even during October, I was already getting Christmas ads and seeing stuff up in stores. I went to the store today and it was just full of Christmas decorations and lights and wrapping paper and stuff like that. And my problem isn't necessarily that they're skipping over Thanksgiving and not giving it a platform. My problem is two months is way too much time for Christmas. It's just too much. If I start listening to Christmas music November 1st, I'm going to be sick of it by December 1st. And then if I'm already sick of it at December 1st, I have 25 more days until Christmas that I have to put up with it. That sounds awful. I would much rather hold out until the day after Thanksgiving, the traditional way, and then only have to suffer through Christmas for a month. And I don't really mean suffer, I do love the Christmas time. But the fact of the matter is, I cannot deal with Christmas music for two months, dude. Just too much Mariah Carey for me. But yeah, I went to the store today. I probably should have picked up some Thanksgiving food, but I'm sure we'll do that probably the Friday after Thanksgiving, like the day after. Black Friday, people lining up at Walmart, Best Buy. Nah, son, I'm lining up at the grocery store so I could be like first one to get the on sale holiday food. You didn't sell all your mashed potatoes? Well, gimme, 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 gimme. And then we're using that and cooking it over the next couple days for Friendsgiving. It's gonna be a good time. But while I was at the store today, I saw Sriracha was back. I don't know if you guys knew this, but Sriracha has been like gone. I don't know how many sriracha lovers there are out there. I adore sriracha and I put it in everything I eat because I'm addicted. Not really, but I really do like my spice. I'm pretty sure I've been on stream telling the story about how I ate the Arby's like ghost burger or something, it was okay. And then like a week before that, I ate this like five alarm burger that you physically had to sign a waiver for. That one actually got me. So I like my spice and seeing that Sriracha is back is great. It's been out of store since like June because the previous harvest, there was a drought. And so there were like no peppers to make Sriracha. I started having to use like these alternatives. For a while I was using Szechuan sauce and that kind of worked, but it has a different consistency. So it's a little bit more watery and doesn't mix into things things as well. And then just recently I found like this spicy Korean sauce, which is also a chili sauce. So I don't know how they just have chili there, but not here. I'm not going to think too hard about it, but it's been working pretty well. But now that I have all that and it's all right, I'm going to wait until I use it all up and then go buy some more sriracha. Shout out sriracha, my dude. But there's actually this other sauce that I've been really into lately. It's called truff sauce. This is not sponsored, but God, I wish it was. So I found this because they were using this hot sauce on the nacho fries at Taco Bell and it was on the menu for like two weeks and then it wasn't. And I was like, this stuff is good. I gotta figure out where I can get it. And I found it online on their website. And then there was like this discount code called Truff25, wink, that when I punched that in, the amount for like two bottles and shipping was like $23, which is a steal because the bottles normally are like 18. So I don't know how I got away with that, but it was it was definitely a steal. And then I found out that you can get it locally. It's at my local Whole Foods and my local Kroger. And I was like, oh, so I could just walk to the store and get it, right? Well, it turns out, again, doing math, if I were to buy two of them in the store for $15 each, it is still more expensive than if I were to use this special code and get it shipped to my front door online by like a whole $7. It's kind of nuts. So even though it's local and cheap, I'm like still considering buying it online because I have a discount code where it's cheaper. So we'll see how long that discount code works. And then once it doesn't work anymore, then I'll go to the store and, and just buy some. But it's really good sauce. And this is me vouching for it because if you like hot sauce, try this, it's delicious. Don't believe me, ask the dishes. Something, something beauty and the beast. And I am more than halfway through this recording. I'm not even more than halfway through my list. Dang. Let me see if I can rapid fire some of these things I have to talk about. Like I said, it's been two months and I haven't like actually told you guys any stories and I've got a million stories and this is all just from the past week, all right? So let me go back just a little bit more. Fight me, Cog. Fight me. Dude, I know you're scared. I don't care. Fight me. God, I hate these dudes. Fight me. Holy. They're all so scared. Look at them. Little wimps. So just recently, and I know this has nothing to do with when I recorded Toonie the Tiger episode, but God, you could probably come up with a conspiracy theory that it was. The Packers finally won a game. And if you've been watching any of this series for the past, oh, I don't know, seven years, 
fans, you know that I cheer for the Green Bay Packers. And I cheer for them when they win, and I still cheer for them when they lose, even though they've been recently incompetent and make me sad. But for the first time in six weeks, they finally won. Again, not related to why I haven't been recording in the Toonie the Tiger episode, but you definitely could argue that might be related. This has been a really hard last six weeks, man. Watching them lose over and over again. I actually physically flew out to Green Bay, Wisconsin, like three or four weeks back, and I was at a game that they lost horribly. It was, it was a, it was an experience. I mean, it was nice to go to Wisconsin. It's definitely cold there, but they've got some great cheese curds. Culver's is really good, by the way. Those of you in Wisconsin, shout out Culver's. And Quick Trip, man, I kind of wish I had a Quick Trip here. We have like gas stations and convenience stores, don't get me wrong, but Quick Trip is a whole other experience. Not only does Quick Trip serve G Fuel, code, code Mega Snoop. No, like Quick Trip actually has like these cans of G Fuel and you can buy them at quick trip but then they also have like hot and ready food and it's not bad right like they have like what's essentially a mcrib but it's like a third of the price of a mcrib like they have mcribs and mcdonald's and i think mcrib is back for its final tour or whatever and it's still like five bucks for like this tiny little thing and it tastes okay i guess but then you can go to quick trip and buy one there for like less than two dollars it's kind of crazy and of course they also have like burgers and and hot dogs and corn dogs and just delicious stuff you know so again not sponsored but god i wish it was if there was a quick trip like around the corner from my house i don't think i'd ever go anywhere else i don't know if i'd ever go grocery shopping again i would just walk to quick trip and get food anytime i was hungry because it's like three bucks there it's nuts also i think every Everything in Wisconsin is just cheaper because the gas there was like $3.50, whereas here it's still like five bucks. I don't know, Wisconsin be looking pretty good right now, besides the cold. Kind of see why Luis moved. But guys, let me tell you unless you absolutely love a team or you just have all the expendable income in the world, don't like travel a thousand miles to go watch your team lose. It's it's, it's it's hard and it hurts. All right, this is the one on Seaweed Street. This is the one where people are like, I can't find it. But seriously, win, lose, or indifferent, it's just such an experience to travel all the way to like Green Bay, Wisconsin to watch a Packer game. Though it was kind of obnoxious because there was these people behind us. Uh, originally, we were sitting there and this couple came up and they're like, you're in our seat. And I was like, huh? And I couldn't read it right because the way that the aisles worked is like the numbers where your butt is supposed to be, not where your feet is supposed to be. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you can understand like the walkways and if they have a number on the step, it was really confusing the way that the number system works. So we were actually supposed to sit one in front, which means we didn't have anyone in front of us. And here's the package that hides here that nobody can find. We actually didn't have anyone in front of us because there was just a metal bar there. And then the people who were like, you're in our seat sat down behind us, watched for like half of the first quarter and then left and they were gone. So I was like, okay, cool. Nobody's behind me. I can like stand up and just be like part of the crowd. Cause apparently nobody around us was really excited to be there for some reason. But if, when it's cold out, you want to stand up and scream because that's how you stay warm. You yell at the other team. You yell at the refs. It's just what you do at a football game, you know? And then halfway through the fourth quarter, I'm sitting there and the Packers are already losing by like two touchdowns and they're definitely not coming back. I'm like, come on ref, something, something, your mother. And then I get poked on the back and I turn around and there's the people again after being gone for three quarters they go could you sit down please we'd like to see and I'm like lady there's nothing left to see the Packers lost three quarters ago all right I didn't say that that would have been rude but I was I was just taken aback because I was like bro I was not expecting these people to leave for three quarters and then come back as the game's basically already over and then ask me to sit so they could see the audacity but it was still worth it for the experience let me tell you would definitely do it again during a winning season where they'll probably actually win like my dad specifically chose that game because they were playing the jets and he figured that's the one that they would win definitely not the one that they won but man i'm already running out of time oops let me see if i can speed run these next topics of conversation so one thing i did want to shout out is g fuel because hopefully soon i'll be getting a new flavor but i'm supposed to be getting three new flavors and they were all like dragon ball z branded so if you like dragon ball z i'm just saying code mega snoop 20 percent off
off. And I do like have to point out it's 20% off now because G Fuel used to do a thing where my code was always 10% off and then like a few weekends of the month, it would bump up to 30% off and it'd be like, oh cool, now is your time to buy because it's a boosted 30% off. But then they realized that nobody was buying it when it was 10% off. And then if you forget to plug your code, then again, nobody was using it. So they were just like, wow, people are just not using codes because they just forget or don't know. Now they're like, it's always 20% off. So you don't have to wait a specific weekend to plug your code, especially if you just happen to be out of town like I was for the past three months. You can just plug it at 20% all the time. And then they said it also acts kind of like a Fortnite code. Also, I still have a Fortnite code if anyone still plays Fortnite. Does anyone still play Fortnite? Code Mega Snoop. But it works kind of like a Fortnite code. So if you go to the G Fuel website and there's like a better deal where it's like 30% off or 40% off, you can use that to get the 30 or 40% off, but then still put in my code as a referral so that I still like get a referral. Something, something money, I got to keep a roof over my head. So that's a really big point I wanted to let you know. Code Mega Snoop is always 20% off unless there's a better deal than, you know, by all means, get the better deal. And then yeah, three new flavors coming out for Dragon Ball Z. So I bought a Dragon Ball Z game that I want to play on stream. We'll see if I actually end up doing that but I bought one it was on sale it was 15 bucks down from 60 and it actually looks pretty good it's called Dragon Ball Z Kakarot and I was working at PlayStation when it first came out and I was like man I would kind of want to play this if I had time and or money but like I said it was on sale so why not so if you're interested in watching me play that leave a like on the video no don't leave a dislike what are you doing but you should leave a like on the video anyway because something something YouTube algorithm it helps me out I guess I don't know YouTube algorithm is so funny I'll make a video about anything and it'll either randomly pop off and do well or it'll just not it's so weird how youtube decides what it pushes and what it doesn't it has nothing to do with relevance either because i'll like make a video on crash bandicoot even though crash bandicoot is years old and that one will pop off and then like i'll make a video about something that's actually relevant like a new video game and then like nothing <laughs> youtube's so weird maybe it should just stick to tone town videos bro i don't know actually that's not true i've thoroughly been enjoying making other videos even if they aren't the most viewed just because i've enjoyed making them as a content creator for doing this for so long you need to do things to keep it fresh one of the things i was shouting out while i was on stream was something that i thought was a very brave move by shumi shami i know she doesn't necessarily do this full time and if you don't know who she is she was a pretty prominent toontown streamer and content creator she made youtube videos and whatnot and hey, i finished another task and she made the bold decision of like hey i've been making toontown videos and playing toontown on stream and i just haven't really been feeling like i want to keep pushing myself to do that there's all these other games that i I love like the sims and animal crossing and stardew valley and that's really where my heart is drawing me to and man i can't tell you how many different people in the toontown community who have just wanted to do other things and i get it i've been there too and i i still like playing toontown and when there's an update of course you're gonna see me playing it like with the 1.3 update uh, let me tell you this isn't just a toontown thing one of the stories i like to reference is from a dude named small beans oh there's absolutely no way i'm gonna be doing that but there's a dude by the name of small beans who i used to love of watching as a Call of Duty creator and he was known for doing Call of Duty montages and gameplays and commentaries and all that jazz and then one day he was like you know I kind of don't want to do this anymore I want to do something else and so he found his love and passion in Minecraft for a while and the views on his videos went down as you'd expect and people were like why are you doing this you're known for Call of Duty you should just stick to Call of Duty but he didn't care he just wanted to have fun so we started making Minecraft videos and yeah sure they started slow but give it a year or so they started picking up and now he's more popular than ever making minecraft videos i think he still makes them to this day i'd have to look let me look at what small beans has been up to he goes by smallish beans now and he has three and a half million subscribers so he's definitely doing something right you know yeah he's still doing minecraft his most recent upload was four days ago and he's been uploading like twice a week for the past i don't know eight years it's been working for him not necessarily that i'm saying that it would work for me right but i, I enjoy what i do and i'll have a little heart to heart with you guys i love doing variety I do. There's so many great video games out there that I just want to share. And I know it's not for everybody and I get it's not for everybody and I'm okay that it's not for everybody. It's just as a content creator, you hit this wall where you feel like you need to stay relevant. There's this, this idea of comfortability where you need to be okay with getting less views. You need to be okay with being less relevant. And when it comes down to it, I don't care about my internet points. You know, how many likes you get on a tweet, how many views you get on stream, how many clicks you get on a YouTube video. I just just like doing what I do because it's my passion. It's what I love doing. And the only thing that gives me a little bit of anxiety about it is making sure I can keep a roof over my head. But I've been blessed enough that I have a loving community that even if it's not
not the hundreds of viewers I might get for a Toontown stream or event or the thousands of views I'd get on a YouTube video, there's still people who watch and enjoy and that means the absolute world to me. But it's so hard for many content creators to make that move or make that switch. That's why I do shout out Shumi and her bravery for coming out so blatantly about it where she just made a post and said, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. And she was really nice about it. She was a lot nicer than maybe I've been in the past about it. And I'm sorry, I've grown up a lot since then. Every single day I'm growing and I'm always trying to be the best version of myself every single time I get back in front of the camera and talk to you guys about anything. But this is me talking to you about a real conversation. I still make some Toontown content here and there whenever I want to or whenever it's relevant to or whenever I have a good idea. Kind of like what I did with the manager's video not too long ago. But my passion for content creation reaches so much farther farther than that. So for those of you who do continue to stick around and watch every single video and leave a like on every single video and show up to every stream, and still support and subscribe and follow and do all that jazz means the absolute world to me. I truly mean that from the bottom of my heart. I've been doing this now full time on and off for like, I don't know, God, seven years, seven years. It's coming up on eight years. It's getting pretty close. And the one thing I am worried about, if anything, is just keeping a roof over my head, right? And I want to provide for the people around me. I did spend a lot of today trying to make sure that Michael could get his streaming set up together so that he can provide more and better content. He's got the green screen up now and he's in a new space to see if that can kind of give him some fresh ideas, more motivation. Toonie the Tiger, that's me, hi. Oh, and I finished that task. Okay, very cool. Sorry, I can't stick around. You're awesome though. But man, the amount of people I've seen go through the Toontown community and just a lot of communities because they'll start on Minecraft and then get tired of it. They'll start on Call of Duty and then get tired of it. Start on Toontown and get tired of it. It's it's a fun job, don't get me wrong, streaming and making content, making TikToks, making YouTube videos, but it's not for everyone and it's not gonna last for everyone. And I'm just truly blessed to make it as far as I have. And I was really thinking about it today and I was like, maybe I should get like a job at the beginning of next year. Cause I have a, I have a sweet resume. All right, I'll, I'll be honest about it. I got a pretty sweet resume. I got this little check box at the bottom that says that I was a social media analyst for Sony PlayStation of America for over a year. I was on a specialty team for PlayStation PlayStation Direct's retail front, working logistics. Like, I look like I know what I'm doing. But man, I really do hope that I get to be a content creator and, and connect with you guys just as much as I can because I want to have so many more years of doing this even though I've done it for so long already and probably way past longer than I should have. You don't need to tell me I'm past my prime. I get it. I know it. It's fine. Again, internet points don't mean everything to me. I couldn't care less. As long as I'm doing something I love and making enough to get by. I don't need to be the most viewed streamer in the world, get the most views on my YouTube videos. I just love doing what I do. And I'm thankful every single day that you guys still give me a platform to do that. I'm going to try to use this platform as much as I can to try to provide content for you guys, inspiration, education, entertainment, anything and everything that I can. And I'm very proud of everybody that's in this household that's also been able to follow those dreams as well. Poutine, he's streaming right now as I'm recording this video. And he got to edit a video for The Right Opinion where he got to showcase himself for a good like 20 or 30 minutes in the middle of the video in front of hundreds of thousands of people. Michael is downstairs right now. He's playing Kingdom Hearts on the, the console while he's waiting for me to finish up so we can go get food. But he says he wants to set up the rest of his computer tonight and do a stream tonight or maybe even tomorrow. And then he's gone to a convention for a little bit to connect with more people and then come back and stream some more. The amount of good I've seen him done and I'm be able to give him a platform to do that, I'm happy to be able to do. And hey, if I got to take a step back from content creation to make sure that these guys thrive. I get it. I do. But God, I really do hope I get to continue to do this for just a little bit longer. So first and foremost, thank you everybody who's been here seven years, five years, three years, a few months, a few weeks, or even if this is the first video you've clicked on mine, which, you know, maybe might be a little weird, but thanks for clicking on the 90th episode of a Toontown Let's Play for the first time. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're doing well. And I probably should have ended this video like five minutes ago, but I really want to make sure that all of my tasks are like set ready for me to do the next thing but I cannot find a district where this isn't a cog building why haven't they fixed this yet so this is probably going to be a little bit longer of an episode because I've been recording a little longer than usual and I've been talking a little longer than usual so the editing is probably going to take a little longer than usual but I want to say thank you everybody just for watching this episode of Tune of the Tiger and if you got this far into the episode all the way to the end here go ahead and leave a comment that says oranges I don't know why that was just the first thing that came to my mind there you go there's my upcoming 
upcoming tasks, legal eagles, corporate raiders, sell bots, and helping a little tune with cogs. That's gonna be tough. <laughs> but this has been Toonie the Tiger and your pal Mega Snoop or whatever you've known me as throughout the years. Again, thank you everybody just for all that you've done for me. Watching this video, you're helping me follow my dreams. And by me following my dreams, I get to help other people follow their dreams. And it's a big chain of helping one another and I just appreciate that you guys are along every step of the way. Thank you guys for watching this episode and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay awesome, God bless, and peace. See ya!